in week three of This Is Us, where we talk about what we do at youth group and why we do what we do. So tonight, um, the question I was thinking about to set up the message for tonight is, how could our group become everything God wants our group to become? That's the question that was on my mind. Like, is there one thing above anything and everything else that we could do that would make it that our group would grow? And I don't mean like more people coming. I mean like we grow deeper in our faith and trust in God and we all become the kind of people and we become the kind of group that God wants us to be. What's like the one thing above everything else we could do to become the group that God wants us to be? So here's a wrong answer. Just come. <laughs> that's it. Just come. Get your butt in a seat and listen. At the end. Um, that's actually not enough, and that wouldn't do what we want to accomplish. So I want to share with you guys some actually amazing verses, because it's a lot more than attending um, that needs to happen for us to become the kind of place God wants us to become, and the kind of group God wants us to become, and the small groups we wants us to become. So this is Ephesians chapter 4, if you have your Bible and you're following along. Ephesians chapter 4. All right. Here's what it says in Ephesians 4, verse 11. Ephesians 4, 11. And Jesus himself gave some to be apostles, some prophets, some evangelists, some pastors and teachers, equipping the saints for the work of ministry. When it says saints, that's talking about the believers, equipping the followers of Jesus for the work of ministry, to build up the body of Christ until we all reach unity in the faith and in the knowledge of God's Son, growing into maturity with a stature measured by Christ's fullness. So let me point out, point out some, a couple things because these are really dense um, sentences and you might have missed them along the way. Okay? He himself gave, and then he lists categories or different gifts or uh, designations for leaders in the church, okay? So apostles are kind of like missionaries, um, prophets, evangelists, pastors, and teachers. And their job is to equip the saints, that is all believers, the followers of Jesus, equip the saints for the work of ministry to build up the body of Christ. So here's the question. Who is supposed to do the work of ministry? Yes. The pastors, right? The teachers, right? No. <laughs> it says he gave the pastors and the teachers to equip the saints. Equip the saints for the work of ministry. Who does the work of ministry? Everyone. The followers of Jesus. The saints. Everyone who considers, considers themselves a Christian. They are the ones who are supposed to do the work of ministry. My job is to equip you to do that work of ministry, to give you the tools you need to do that work of ministry. So whose job is it to build up the body of Christ? All of ours, all of our jobs. And he goes on, he says, and we do this in verse 13, until we all reach unity in the faith and in the knowledge of God's son, growing into maturity with a stature measured by Christ's fullness. This is an amazing verse. It says, like, what is our end goal? What this is saying is when together as a group, we're like Jesus. That's the finish line, okay? If you looked at our group and how we relate to each other and communicate and care for each other and it looked like Jesus, we would have arrived. <laughs> I don't know if we'll ever make it there, but that's what we're working for. So us adult leaders, we equip you guys to do the kinds of things that will help our group grow more like Jesus. And he says this, here's something pretty awesome, if that happens, he says, then we will no longer be little children tossed by the waves and blown around by every wind of teaching, by human cunning with cleverness and the techniques of deceit. In other words, there's lots of deceptive teaching out there. There's lots of things that can draw you away from the faith, but when we give you tools and you use those to build up the body of Christ and we're all doing our part, one of the things that happens is we are not drawn away by those false things anymore. We're not distracted by those things. Verse 15, but speaking the truth in love, let us grow in every way into him who is the head, Christ. From him, from Jesus, the whole body fitted and knit together by every supporting ligament 
promotes the growth of the body for building up itself in love by the proper working of each individual part. Okay, so this is the last dense sentence we're going to cover, okay? Let me read that again. From Jesus, the whole body, so now Paul's saying, our gathering, the church community is like a body, and every person has a different part. So from Jesus, this whole body, fitted and knit together by every supporting ligament, promotes the growth of the body for building up itself building out up itself in love by the proper working of each individual part. What does he say? He's saying the same thing again. When will we grow? When each part does its job. When each part of this body does the part that God has gifted it to do. So here's the main idea based off these verses, okay? Um, the only, all right, sorry, let me say it. <laughs> we'll never be as great as God wants us to be unless every person uses the gifts that God has given them. We'll never be as great as God wants us to be unless every person does what God has gifted them to do, okay? We're going to look at some other verses from Paul in our small group, and they go on to talk about the idea that the church community, the gathering of believers, is like a body. And just as our bodies have a bunch of different parts, and those parts have to work properly so you don't walk around like this, so too, our church community, each of us has a specific part to play, and we only grow when we do our part. So, story to illustrate this. Um, when I was growing up, my older brother was really, really good at um, taking things apart, figuring out how they work, and then putting them back together. Like, I was amazed when I was a little kid, like watching him, and he would like take apart speakers, figure out what all the parts were, and then he would actually make a bigger and better speaker, and then put that in his room. Like, that's pretty cool. Now, my brother was not a great student, and I was a really good student. So I got to thinking when I was in middle school, I'm smarter than my brother. If he could take stuff apart, put it back together, make it better, I could do the same thing. So I took apart a computer one time. <laughs> oh no. And I put it back together. And um, there were some like extra parts at the end, but it's like, I was just streamlining the system, you know? <laughs> and I put it back together, and uh, guess what happened when I pressed the power? It blew up. It did blow up, nothing. Absolutely nothing happened. Uh, what I learned is, uh, one, that uh, my brother is smarter than me when it comes to technology, actually. Um, there's different kinds of smarts. I'm book smarts, and he's stuff putting together smarts. But another lesson I learned is this. Uh, they don't make computers with optional parts, okay? And here's the thing. God did not make the church community with optional people. When you are not here we miss out on the gifts that God has actually given you that he wants you to use to help make us the kind of community he wants us to be. Let me give you another, another example. Uh, this is a French press. Anyone familiar with French press coffee? Yes? Anyone here a coffee drinker? Who here drinks coffee? No. Yay. Um, okay. So a French press is much like many other machines. Many of the machines you guys just made or enacted, right? Where many machines, they only have the parts that are necessary for them. Like, if you took this apart and tried to get rid of a piece, like we got the filter here and the guard for the filter, like it would not do its job, right? If you took, I don't know, what would happen if I get rid of the filter? Like, hey, probably filter's optional. I'm trying to make some coffee. Ground. Yeah, you're gonna get ground. And actually, you know, funny story, you know why I have a metal one? <laughs> because for several years I had a glass one and then it broke, and so I got another glass one and then that one broke. And I got another glass one, and Jill said you should buy a metal one because you keep breaking your glass ones. Um, like if you don't, if this is broken, yeah, you can't. You just just use this, you know, press it down. Like no, you you need every single part to make coffee, right? Again, we are like that. Unleashed is like that. We will never be as a group as great as God wants us to be, unless. Every person uses the gifts that God has given them to use, right? Which means, which is pretty crazy, and I don't know exactly how this works, but what the New Testament teaches is that the moment you accept Jesus, the Spirit comes inside of you, and He actually gives you gifts that you are supposed to use with other believers. And you know what Paul is saying is, our community only works best, only actually works at all, when you use the gift that God has given you, and Seth uses the gift that God has given him, and Janelle, and Kirsten, and Addie, and all of us do that together. That's what 
is the key to our growth. And here's honestly what's a little bit de depressing to me about this, okay? That means, hey Luke, maybe you have the gift of teaching. You can write the best message in the world and that does not ensure success for our group. Us adults could lead the best small group in the world or the best get together and that does not ensure that we will have a great group. That does and every one of us say, I'm gonna use whatever gifts God has given me. Even though it's awkward and uncomfortable and I don't even know what those gifts are, I'm gonna to choose to be an active part. Not just to come and sit and listen, but to join and take part and do what God has called me to do. So, when I've talked about this with teens before, um, there's four different excuses that come up. Four different excuses. All right, number one is I'm too young. I'm too young to take charge and help out and do stuff. Maybe especially some of you incoming sixth graders feel that way. I'm too young to help out. Here's the thing. Did you guys know that almost all of Jesus' disciples were teenagers? Right? So there's this interesting account where the religious leaders ask Peter, doesn't your rabbi pay the temple tax? The temple tax was a tax for those 20 years or older. And Jesus has this interesting conversation where he basically says, I shouldn't have to pay it at all because I'm Jesus. <laughs> but because you told those religious leaders that I do pay it, let's go ahead and pay it and go fishing and catch a fish. And it'll have enough money in his mouth to pay the tax for me and for you. Jesus has not just him and Peter, but also 11 other disciples. But only Jesus and Peter pay the temple tax. The most probable explanation is because Jesus and Peter are the only ones in the group that are over the age of 20. So, Jesus was like the original youth pastor, and he had one <laughs> adult leader. <laughs> and, uh, yeah, that was their youth group, all right? <laughs> but, all right. And what kinds of things did Jesus call those disciples to do? To go around in groups of two like we looked at, right? And preach the good news and heal people and do ministry, right? Those were the people that Jesus equipped to change the world, were teenagers. So don't say, I'm too young. Because uh, you're not. Okay? Second excuse. Um, I don't have any experience. I don't have any experience. I can't do it because I don't have any experience doing it. Here's the question. How do you get experience? By doing it. Yay! All right, so that, that deals with that excuse, right? Uh, if you don't have any experience, you can get some. <laughs> Try it, do it, okay? Uh, third excuse is I won't get it right. I'll mess up, I'll do something wrong. You might ask me to lead a game, and I'll mess up, or I'll choke and it'll go badly. Right? I won't get it right. Uh, here's the thing, I've never gotten a message 100% perfect. We probably haven't led a perfect small group, okay? And none of us gets it 100% right, ever. Okay? That doesn't stop us from trying and using our gifts. So don't let the fact that you won't get it perfectly right stop you from using the gift that God has given you. And, the, and then the final question is this. Uh, the final excuse is, well, I don't know what my gift is. I don't know what my gift is. Okay? Now, I, I want to say two things in response to this. Number one is, the only reason I know what my gifts are and aren't is through a long process of elimination. Okay, I'll try that. Oh, that went terrible. I don't think that's my gift. I'll try that. That went actually okay. Maybe that's my gift. I'll do it again. Yeah, it, it did go okay. Maybe I'll do it again. Yeah, it, I think this might be my gift. All right. It's this long process of elimination. You find out what your gifts are by doing different things and seeing what makes you come alive in your heart and what God supernaturally empowers and makes go well. And over time, you discern these areas really aren't my gifts and these areas kind of are. And the final thing that I'll say is this, if you, don't think, if you don't know what your gifts are, we're gonna make it easy for you. We're gonna bring back something we did, um, I think it was two years ago. We're gonna do small group rotations. And what I mean by that is all the small groups are gonna have different opportunities over the next few months to try out different areas of ministry. Now, let me say up front, these are not all the areas of ministry, okay? So we're not gonna have each small group teach or lead worship or lead a small group. But those two are areas that you can consider if you have giftings in and would like to volunteer as well. So just talk to me about. Um, but what we're gonna do is, for example, the way we're gonna make it work is like middle school boys, we are gonna be responsible for the next three weeks to get snacks set up, um, to make sure that everything is set up in here that it should be, and then afterwards to clean up um, and take everything down. Kind of the behind the scenes work, the set up and the takedown. For the next three weeks, 
um, middle school girls, you're going to be in charge of deciding what games we play and why we play them and leading those games, okay? Um, high school guys are going to be on the welcome team for the next three weeks, okay. which means there's someone new, your job is to go to them and welcome them. So here's the thing, if there's someone new and I welcome them, it's okay, but somewhat creepy. <laughs> if there's someone new and you welcome them, it's cool, okay? <laughs> there's, we need you to do your part, okay? <laughs> um, uh, you guys, so your guys' job will be to welcome new people, to also get them to fill out a card, and then to give them a t-shirt. You can do that. And you might learn, I do not have gifts of welcoming people, <laughs> and you might learn that you do, and you'll learn something good either way. And then high school girls, you're going to be in charge of prayer for the next three weeks. And then after three weeks, we're going to switch. And you're going to try something else. So three weeks, and switch. And what I want you to do is as we go through this, I want you to consider, is this an area that I'm good at or not? Might this be what I should do at youth group? Because our group will never be as great as God wants it to be unless every single person is using the gifts that God has given them to use. So... In closing, uh, I want to embarrass one of our students. I should have asked them beforehand. Sorry, Trevor. <laughs> but last week, there was a need. And this is often is, uh, is how gifts come out. There was a need in that Seth was sick and Jake was gone. So there's only one guy leader. So I was going to lead the middle school boys. And Trevor was like, hey, I'll lead the group. Um, and he led the discussion for the high school boys. Um, and I wasn't there, so I don't know how it went. But then, but I went well enough that Trevor was like, hey, this is pretty cool. I, I think he was joking, but he's like, I think this is like my calling. Um, and to the point where, yeah, like he got together with Jake, and I think he's going to start um, helping lead discussions on Sunday nights and to feel out if that's an area of giftedness for him. And I just want to say, that is awesome. That is what we're talking about. Be a Trevor. Be a Trevor. But in all seriousness, if every single person in our group has the attitude of, I don't know what my gift is, but I'm gonna use it. I'm gonna try and figure out what it is and I'm gonna use it. That is the only way we will be the group that God wants us to be. Um, and I don't want anything less than that. And I also want you guys to have that experience of fulfillment, of using your gifts and helping out and helping us grow together into what God wants us to be. So, what is your gift and what is your next step in using it? So we're going to be talking about small group. Let me pray for us, and we'll go to small group. <clears throat> Jesus, thank you for this night. Um, thank you for the fun we've already had tonight. I pray that you would give us uh, openness and honesty in our small groups now. And I pray for all of us that you would help us to let go of the excuses that we so easily come up with of all the reasons why we can't, or we're too young, or we're too scared to help out and serve and take action. And I pray that every student here who's a follower of you would choose to trust you, would seek to learn how you've gifted them, and would choose to use that gift to build us up as a youth group community so that we could be everything you want us to be, God. In your name we pray. Amen.